Hey everybody and welcome back to some more Oxygen Not Included. We're back with the Impenetrable Gang. It's cycle 30, but before we get into anything in today's episode, there is something very important that we need to take care of. Something that has been brought to my attention between episodes, and that is of course the hats that our duplicates can wear that they haven't been wearing because I've yet to assign them one. And so real quick here, I'm going to go ahead and give each duplicate their very own hat. The hats do correspond to the uh, skills that you give your duplicates so for example stinky right here who is our research guy has three hats available to him one for advanced research one for field research and one for astronomy i kind of like the astronomy one here we got a nice cool looking orange one as well as uh, this like basic silver one here that you get for the advanced research unlock there and then frankie of course is our chef we're going to give him grilling two hassan is improved digging and super hard digging oh that the hard hat there looks pretty cool we are going to do some stuff with hassan in today's episode and so he might lose this digging hat at some point fairly soon here but for now that's fine he can wear that uh, may can have the aesthetic design hat and then finally mima down here only has one choice and that is the improved carrying hat because that is the only skill that she has unlocked right now although she is very close to unlocking another skill point in today's episode and so if we hit play everybody is going to simultaneously throw on a new hat and oh boy look at that they look fantastic everyone's so happy that they have their hat on i don't know if this affects their morale in any way or their stress i would hope that it does but i'm also fairly certain that it might just be a cosmetic change and so i don't have any high hopes for uh less stress or higher morale going forward now what i want to work on for real in today's episode is um, a couple of things one of the first things that i would like to do though is i would like to potentially re-roll some of the skill points that we have given to Hassan. And I want to do that with the skill scrubber right here, which can refund a duplicate skill points for reassignment. So for now, I'm going to throw this thing down right about here. And the reason why I want to reassign Hassan's skill points is that right now we don't have anybody who is able to do ranching. And one of the things that I do want to work on in today's episode is trying to get a little hatch farm up and running. The hatches, uh, for those who are not familiar, are the little guys you've seen walking around the base, these guys right here. And the way that they work, as we've mentioned a little bit in previous episodes, is that they consume resources, either food or rock or essentially anything. They can eat almost anything in the game. If we look at the uh, database here and we scroll down to the food, you can see they can eat all of this stuff here. They can eat sand, clay, dirt, sedimentary rock, mushrooms, meat, gristle, berries, tofu, anything you can think of. These guys can pretty much eat it. Uh, if we scroll down here, you'll see the whole list of things they can eat and how much of it they will eat per cycle. The amount that they eat per cycle is important because it also relates to the other thing that they do, which is excrete coal. And you'll notice if we hover over this here that they excrete 50% of their consumed mass in coal. So for example, if in a day they eat 140 kilograms of sand which is a crazy amount of sand by the way for this little guy to eat but if they eat 140 kilograms of sand they should poop out 80 grams of coal whereas for example if we feed them lice loaf which is about halfway down there they eat only 0.4 kilograms of lice loaf per cycle which means that per cycle they will only produce about 0.2 kilograms of coal and so my plan for now is to set up a fairly rudimentary hatch farm to get us a slight little bit of extra coal coming in i don't really think it's going to keep us going in the long run and i even in the short term i don't think it's going to be our main source of coal um at least not just yet i think there are ways that we can make it much more sustainable going forward but for now i want to set up a fairly basic hatch farm to get us a little bit of supplementary coal in the early game here and also i've not played with any of the ranching tools since the ranching upgrade and so uh, i kind of want to give those a go as well and so for now i think what i am going to do is one two three four one two three and then four would be here i uh, i kind of need to decide where i'm going to put my ranch my hatch farm and i think it's going to go kind of right about here we're going to make another room right near the bottom of the base um i uh, maybe that's not such a great idea actually you know what no i'll cancel this and we'll build it a little higher up the reason why i'm going to build it a little higher up is that i'm fairly certain that if i build my hatch farm too low down they're gonna end up just in like a big old body of carbon dioxide they're not gonna be able to breathe and then they're gonna suffocate which is really not ideal for a, uh, a farm scenario if we do click on these guys and look at their database entry we can see that their comfortable temperature range is between 10 and 20 degrees celsius uh that's kind of on the cooler side i don't really think we have anywhere in our base right now that is between 10 and 20 degrees the majority of our base i think is between 20 and 30 degrees celsius at the moment but 
as you can see, they are very uh, resilient and they can live anywhere between negative 30 and 70 degrees Celsius, essentially meaning that they can live almost anywhere. And so it really doesn't matter temperature wise where we put them in the base. Uh, as I mentioned here, this one, uh, this base down here is a little bit on the warmer side, you know, 23, 24, maybe 25. But uh, for the most part, that's fine. They should be able to survive and even thrive in uh, this temperature over here. We do have our skill scrubber here, which is very dark. It looks almost uh, rusty over here, like it's broken. But uh, if we select it and we select, I think, Hassan, let me check real quick, though, that this is the right character. It is. I think I'm going to undo super hard digging and reassign that skill point to critter wrenching. This is going to allow us to actually pick up those hatchlings and take them into a specific room and then actually work with them from that point onwards. And so, uh, Hassan, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to go out and get your uh, skills scrubbed if you don't mind. Uh, also, we do need to get some research going here because if we're going to actually farm these animals, we do need the ranching upgrade. This gives us access to things like the critter drop-off, which releases trapped creatures back into the overworld, essentially telling our duplicants where to put the creatures that they collect. Uh, we've also got stuff like the critter feeder, which can automatically dispense food for the critters so we can kind of automate the feeding process of our hatches. And then also there is the grooming station, which you need in order to specifically make uh, any room into a stable. Uh, so right down here at the bottom, we've got the stable, which requires a grooming station, a minimum of 12 tiles and a maximum of 96 tiles. Once we get that, we can start grooming the hatches and eventually they'll transform from being wild hatches to being tamed, domesticated hatches, which is pretty good for us. You'll see right now, uh, if we hover over a hatch, it says idle, it says wild, and it says happy. We want to get rid of that wild tag and we want to make these guys domesticated hatches that we can work with. One of the benefits of domesticating the hatches, I believe, is that they will eat more food. They rely on us for food solely and so they will eat more food and thus for us in particular, they should produce more coal. That's the idea, at least how well it works out i guess we'll find out but for now we'll select the ranching upgrade and get that going and speaking of research that does remind me that i do kind of want to uh, change up the priorities a little bit here right now we have it set up in such a way that nobody in the base apart from stinky can do research which i think might be a mistake now we've got may here who can't do research anyway but i think what we should probably do is set somebody else for example maybe mima here to be able to do research and then maybe frankie and hassan can do research but only as a low priority so if we set the priority here to low uh, that gives it a priority of 20 whereas stinky has a priority of 50 so he's gonna go and do that research before anybody else that's gonna be the first thing that he does whereas frankie for example is gonna try and do cooking if he can um, or he's gonna go ahead and do things like digging and attacking before he tries to do research and then hassan same idea he's gonna do farming or digging or, or even attacking before he goes and tries to do some research. The reason why I've changed that is because uh, you'll notice that we end up in situations like this one right now where Stinky is doing the research, but we could also at the same time have somebody else on the other research station getting research completed quicker because even if Stinky is the fastest, having a second person doing this kind of just passively in the background is going to make us faster, which is uh, real important there. Um, you'll notice that Hassan is inside of this uh, machine here. I'm kind of a little sad that we didn't get to watch him actually go in. It's a pretty cool animation, but the doors open up, he jumps in, and then this machine just shakes him around for like... 10 minutes, maybe like a whole day, I don't know, but he's gonna get shaken around until he uh, forgets everything that he's learned. And then we can reassign those skill points uh, once that is done. Um, another thing that I was thinking about is potentially moving the supercomputer and the research station down closer to our water source here, just because of the fact that right now, a lot of our water is being used for research. And right now, somebody has to run all the way down to the pitcher pump, grab the water bottle, and then run it all the way back up to the research station in order for the research to be done. And so I'm thinking I might move that down here. Um, at the same time, I might also move a couple of storage bins down near the research station, because right now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in order for research to be completed, we need water. And I think we also need dirt yeah you'll see we're using 1160 grams per second of dirt in there as well and so if we were to move both of our research stations down near the water and we were to put under the storage bin down here that specifically held all of our dirt i think it would just make the researching process much much quicker uh, the only downside could be if we didn't have enough oxygen down here although it looks like it's actually doing fine in terms of oxygen most of the carbon dioxide is is much lower down on the base and so that's something that i might look into in today's episode but before we do that let's go over and reassign hassan's skill points here for whatever reason he has zero oh no he's still in there oh okay i, th I saw a uh, i saw wait is he okay i think he is in there but 
Those eyes don't look great. No, he's not in there. He's here. Is he just doing other things right now? Like, is that how that... Hold on. I'm going to set this to like a priority seven. And so hopefully when he wakes up in the morning, he's going to go in there and get his skill points scrubbed. I think what might have happened there is that like he was halfway through getting his points scrubbed and then decided that he had something more important to do and thus went and did that, which is a little bizarre. And the other benefit here is that you can see we're getting research done throughout the night and eventually Neymar will become somewhat competent at uh, completing research. And so that should be uh, should be fine. Oh, here we go. I love that. I don't know whose idea it was to just have a duplicate jump into a, a little like cage like that and just shake them around until they lose their skill points. But uh, I think that's pretty cool. It's a little neat animation they've got going on there. Um, so let us see here. We do need to dig this out over here. And crucially for the room that our hatches are going to be in, we need to make sure that the door is on the roof. And the reason for that is that if we don't put the door on the roof, uh, which is, I keep pressing R to rotate. It's not R, it is O to rotate. So let's try that again. Oh, there we, ah, there's no space in here, which is a little annoying. I might, Oh, no, there is space in here, actually, to delete these uh, these tiles here before I can put the door down. That's fine. Um, but if we don't put the door in the roof, or at the very least high up, the hatches will just escape when the door is open. You know, if we had the door like this, as soon as somebody tried to walk out, the hatches would walk out as well, uh, and that becomes an issue. And so we need to make sure that we have a door right about there. And we also have to make sure that we have ladders to allow our duplicates to actually get down into the room. Hassan is finally done here, so let's head on over to skills. You'll see he did lose his hat there, which is a shame, but we're going to go with improved farming and with critter ranching. And then there is the option for critter ranching too, which gives him plus two husbandry. There's also a crop tending, which gives him plus two to agriculture as well. I'm not too sure where I want to take Hassan with this, but I think for now I'm going to give him critter ranching too, and then let's like assign him to whichever hat he gets from that. Just because we're going to be doing a lot of uh, ranching today, I think having the critter ranching and having that extra husbandry is going to be quite useful for him. There we go. Look at that. He's got a new hat and he loves it. Fantastic. So we'll dig this area out over here. And now that we have Hassan, who is able to ranch, what we can do is we can click on these hatches and we can click wrangle. And what that's going to do is he's going to run down here and he's basically just going to tie up these hatches until they're ready to be deposited into our new room over here. How is the research going? We're almost there, actually, on the research front, which is good. And we've got Stinky on the case, so that research is going to get done as fast as possible, which is fantastic. Food seems to be going well, which is good. And another thing that I do want to work on if we get time in today's episode is filtering water. We've got this polluted water over here, and ideally, we've also got a fair bit of polluted oxygen, but I think our deodorizer is doing fine on that front. But I would love to start actually uh, filtering this water back out into regular water that we can use for our lavatories because I'm still a little concerned about the amount of fresh water that we have for the long term. And so I really want to start using, uh, reusing kind of like the, uh, the filtered water as soon as possible. Uh, there we go. Look at this. This guy is all tied up and ready to go. And uh, we have just unlocked the research, which is fantastic. I am going to set the priority of this dig here a little higher because I do want this room finished fairly quickly here so i'll go ahead and assign all of that stuff there and then essentially we're gonna have a critter drop off right about here it doesn't matter i don't think where in the room you put this but for now we're gonna put it um you know what, actually no, i'll put it on the other side of the room like that we're also gonna have a critter feeder which for now i'll put right about there and then finally we also need the grooming station which for now i will place kind of smack bang in the middle of the room right about there nice and so once this is all dug out and all built in, we should be able to start moving all of the hatches from around the base over and into this room. Uh, I'll pause real quick so we can get the new research going. I would love to get the water filtration online, which is this guy right here. The water sieve produces clean water from polluted water and sand, also produces polluted dirt. Thankfully, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, we can always put our polluted dirt in the compost there and turn it back into regular dirt. So that is all fine. I'll also put a, a sweep order in here as well, just so they can clean this up once, they, uh, once they're done actually building everything. New skill points are available here. I think this is going to be Mima. It is. And I think for now, we're just going to keep on pushing her down the carrying route. Maybe she gets a new hat here if we uh, hit play real quick. No, there's no new hat that's involved with the... Oh, no, maybe she'll get it after she receives the power from the portal. Yeah, there we go. 
Now, another thing that we have mentioned in the past is paintings. And I think we do have paintings unlocked now under uh, furniture down here. Yeah, blank canvases that uh, Mimar kind of, oh, me, sorry, can draw on once we, uh, once we get them down. Unfortunately, they do require fiber. And if I'm not mistaken, fiber, if we look in the database here, is acquired from, I think it's thimble reed? Thimble reed, this stuff right here. Thimble reed is a wetlands plant used in the production of high quality fabrics prized for their softness and breathability. Yeah, I think we need this in order to produce fiber. And by default, I'm pretty sure this spawns in the, uh, I think it's a swamp biome, this like slimy biome over here. Right now, I actually don't see any on the map. I've yet to, uh, I did do a quick look around before the episode started and I've not seen any thimble reed and so i think if we do want to try and get some we are going to have to travel into these swamp biomes and uh, and try and find some now um as mentioned before that does pose its own risks one of the risks is slime lung slime lung can be taken care of again if we look at the research tab here and we look at medicine which is here there is the hand sanitizer the hand sanitizer is really good for removing almost all germs from a duplicate and so i think if we can get one of those set up we can fairly safely go into the slime biome at which point our duplicates will get slime lung, but they should then lose all of that slime lung as they travel back into uh, into the rest of the base. The other thing that we could potentially have to consider is chlorine. It looks like for the most part, it's just polluted oxygen on this side. Polluted oxygen isn't too much of a big deal. We can filter that out with the deodorizer. So that's not too bad. It's really the chlorine and the hydrogen that for now we really don't want in our base. So this might actually not be too bad. What I might do is kind of continue on building this way, have a hand sanitizer, maybe I have two airlock doors so that the polluted oxygen can't get through too quickly. And then we should be able to do a little bit of exploration at which point we can hopefully find some uh, some thimble reeds and start putting down some paintings uh, around the base to make things look just a little bit nicer. Uh, but back over here, we do now have our grooming station. We've also got our critter drop-off. And so now what we can do in here is we can go ahead and select the critter that we want to uh, store. In this case, we want to store a hatch. And I think for now, we want to store like a maximum of five, maybe six. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the perfect number is, but if you put too many hatches into too small of an enclosure, they, um, oh gosh, that was the printing pod sound. It scared me for a second there. What have we got here? We got some shine eggs, which we could take. Shine eggs are uh, pretty useful. There is... Uh, Catalina here, who does have a husbandry interest. Maybe a little bit late, honestly. She's also got mole hands and uh, twinkle toes. This would have been quite nice to have, honestly. For now, I'm just going to take the shine bug eggs. We can always go ahead and eat those or just spawn in more shine bugs to overpopulate our base uh, as we go forward here. But uh, essentially, uh, as I was saying, the hatches don't like having too many hatches in the same area. Uh, they get kind of on edge, I guess, about having too many hatches around. And so you really want to make sure that you only have um, a small number of hatches in a certain space i think four five maybe six is probably going to be enough for this area here we'll find out when we start moving them in it'll tell us when we've uh, when we've got too many we do have another one here which seems to have unwrangled itself like there is that, are there three i think there were three hatches on this tile there's like one yeah i think there were three hatches there we'll find out in a second when we go to uh when we go to move it we also have a hatch egg over here as well which does kind of also link to another benefit of the hatch farm and that is that if we can get the hatch farm up and running Eventually, they'll, they'll get eggs, and we can either use those eggs for food, you know, we can have our duplicates just eat their eggs on their own, or we can set up a separate hatch farm for essentially farming the hatches for meat, right? We can have one hatch farm for producing coal, and then what we can do is we can take the eggs from that farm, put them into, I believe, an incubator is something we can make in the uh, under one of these ranching upgrades here. Yeah, right here, there is the incubator, which will uh, house the eggs until they're ready to hatch. And so what we could do is, if we wanted a, a supplementary source of food, is we could have hatches producing coal and then once the hatches did produce coal we could have the eggs that those hatches produced sent somewhere else incubated and then we could kill the hatches that come from those eggs to produce a source of food for us just an option not necessarily something that we are uh, are going to do i would love to uh, get this guy moved i don't know if it has to be hassan that does it but can we like set this guy to like a high priority or maybe this guy over here to a high priority so that the hatch gets moved into its new home Whilst we, uh, oh no, there we go, look, he did. Was that right? Yeah, okay, so whilst he does that, we'll also go ahead and uh, start wrangling up some of the hatches as well, if I can select it. There we go, wrangle. I would also love to wrangle this guy over here. Eventually, we'll get a hatch over here. This egg will, uh, will hatch eventually. Oh yeah, look at that. And then they pick him up in a bag, and they take him back. 
<laughs> oh, it's an egg here. It's not under the hatch. I see. So we only had two hatches there. That's fine. We've got two in here now. And a third one will be brought in any minute now. There we go. And let me slow down real quick here because now we get to see the animation of uh, grooming the hatches. Look at that. He's got a little bush out. He's like brushing the, the, the hatch's teeth. He's going to brush it a little bit. Look how happy and content that hatch looks. He sprayed it with something. Look at that. And boom. So now this is the default hatch, which is uh, expelling waste. So there's going to be some coal in there. But this guy is wild and happy. Uh, and these two are wild, happy and groomed. And over time, as they become, um, as they keep getting groomed, they'll become less and less wild. You'll see right now, this guy is 100% wildness. Whereas if we look at this guy, you'll see his wildness is down at uh, 92%. They uh, do last for 100 cycles. So they last quite a while. Um, eventually, we will have to replace the uh, hatches in here with other hatches. And so um, eventually, it is going to become a good idea for us to incubate and grow hatches just to replace the hatches that are already here. But uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and sweep up everything that's in there. And I'm also going to put down a new storage bin right next to the coal generator. So like right here. And we're going to specify this storage bin for coal and we're going to set it to a high priority and what that's going to do is it's going to mean that whenever there is coal on the floor available for our duplicates to collect they're going to get it and they're going to put it in that storage bin before they put it anywhere else um, and thus whenever they need to refill the coal generator all they got to do is pop down here grab the coal stick it in the coal generator and everything is good uh, over here of course we do have our critter feeder now as i mentioned before they can eat almost anything but ideally we want them eating something that they can eat a lot of in a day so sand sandstone clay crushed rock and dirt and sedimentary rock are all things that we really do want them to be eating now uh, there are also different kinds of hatches you'll see here we've got egg chances and again if we look at the database here and we scroll down you'll see there are different kinds of hatch there's the normal hatch which is what we've got there is the sage hatch there is the i think it's called the rock hatch or the stone hatch and then further down there is the smooth hatch and i think that is the last one yeah and each of these hatches have different attributes right for example the smooth hatch which you'll notice uh, we can't get just yet there's a different way of getting the smooth hatches uh, that we could look into later but uh, these guys are pretty cool in that you can feed them ores like copper ore and they will poop out the processed refined version of that ore whereas right now we have to put that through the rock crusher for example in order to turn our copper ore into uh, into copper but the reason that I'm bringing this up is that uh, I think we probably want to go for the stone hatches because the stone hatches have the added benefit of producing 100% of what they eat. So whereas right now our critters will eat, for example, 140 kilograms of sandstone and then poop out 70 kilograms of coal, if we feed the stone guys 140 kilograms of sandstone, they will poop out 140 kilograms of stone. And again, the reason I bring this up is that the chances of getting a stone hatchling or a sage hatchling are determined by what you feed the critters so for example if i hover over the sage hatchling it says the probability increases when the creature eats dirt whereas the stone hatchling probability increases when they eat sedimentary rock and so for now i am going to go ahead and uh, under hatch i'm going to specify that i want this to be filled up with sedimentary rock i do think that we have sedimentary rock let me just check real quick that we do i think it's under raw mineral yeah we got 400 kilograms not quite as much as the 161 tons of sandstone and actually looking at this if they can eat 141 kilograms of sedimentary rock a day we're only gonna last like a day or two before this is um all gone and i actually don't know where we're getting that sedimentary rock from i know we have igneous rock like there's igneous rock up here i think there's some more igneous rock uh, down at the bottom side of the base here but i'm actually not sure where we get sedimentary rock from i don't see any sedimentary rock around here let me check the uh the manual real quick oh it's over here in the swamp biome okay that actually might be fine for now what i'm gonna do is i don't know i'm gonna wait until this is empty before i do anything else i'm gonna let them eat this for, for a little while now but uh, we might have to start feeding them like sandstone for a little while just to kind of carry them over until we can get more sedimentary rock but let us go ahead and research the hand sanitizer here let's get that going uh, thankfully it's only a basic research and so it should get done fairly quickly here which is always good uh, down here we want to make sure that you are storing coal and we're going to set you to like priority eight just to make sure the coal always goes there before it goes anywhere else uh, last episode we used about a ton of coal i think we started with like 7.7 .7 tons we ended with about 6.7 you can see we dropped down to about 6.3 hopefully we're gonna slow down that drop as we get more and more 
hatches into here and as we feed them and as they eat more and produce more, hopefully that will uh, stay steady a little bit. You can see that it went up to 6.5, down to 6.1, up to 6.3. You can see it's hovering quite steadily there. And so hopefully we can maintain some coal production with our uh, with our hatchlings. There is some more research done. I think that one unlocked us the um, apothecary here, which produces medicine to cure most basic diseases. So that is uh, that is fine. Let's go ahead and build our tile over here that we're going to use to get over to the slime area. And also let's go ahead and put in the airlocks, actually. So I'm going to put in like one here and then maybe just one a little bit further on like here. And we are going to build a tile above that as well to make sure that it's fully locked in. Again, it's not going to be perfect, but it will slow down the rate at which the polluted oxygen moves into the base. Um, and hopefully if it's slow enough, that will mean that the uh, deodorizer here has a pretty good chance of getting rid of all of the polluted oxygen before it becomes a problem. That is the idea, at least. We'll see how well that actually ends up working out. Oh, would you look at that? We have a, uh, a baby hatchling ready to go. I feel like we might as well go ahead and wrangle that and stick it in the, uh, the hatchling pod with the rest of them. I'm actually surprised at how fast that one grew. I thought this one might have been older, but maybe not. Maybe this one's been around for a longer time and I just couldn't see it, but because it was behind the, uh, the other hatchling there. Now, one thing we do have to bear in mind here, actually, is that the hand sanitizing station, which we have just unlocked, and I believe is under medicine, does require 50 kilograms of bleach stone, which is found in chlorine. We've got some up here, and we also have some, uh, I think, right down here. Now, the problem with the bleach stone, of course, is that it is encased in chlorine, and if we want to get there, we run the risk of getting chlorine into our base. Now, there are a couple of ways that we can mitigate this. For example, up here, we've tried to mitigate the polluted oxygen a little bit with these airlocks. We could do a similar thing with the chlorine, but the problem is that we've got no way of getting rid of the chlorine really once it's in our base outside of maybe trying to uh, pump it out with a gas pump. And so, although it's okay that we get a little bit of polluted oxygen in our base because the deodorizer can get rid of it, it's less okay getting chlorine in our base. Now, there are a couple of ways that we can get around this. There are a couple of different airlocks that we can make to stop gases moving into our base like chlorine one of the options that i've done before is the water airlock essentially uh, gases can't move through water so for example if there was chlorine in this area here that chlorine cannot move through the water to get to the rest of the base and so what you can do is you can set up like a little puddle of water the old duplicates have to run through but that the gases can't move through now that does work the problem being that your duplicates get either soggy feet or they get sopping wet and then they get a bit more stressed and if possible we'd like to avoid that and so what i'm going to try instead is something called a co2 airlock which essentially uses the fact that the co2 in the base always drops to the lowest point and much like with the water, gases won't move if there's another gas in the way so for example if there's chlorine on one side and oxygen on the other the chlorine and oxygen will kind of move and merge between each other. However, if there is chlorine on one side, oxygen on the other, and then carbon dioxide in the middle, the carbon dioxide prevents the chlorine or the oxygen moving from one side to the other because the carbon dioxide always sinks to the lowest point. So this is probably going to be easier to show through demonstration here. But the idea is that we do something a little bit like this. What we're going to do is we're going to have all the carbon dioxide sink down into this little pit down here. We're then going to build tile here and here so that our duplicates do have to walk through a pit of carbon dioxide. They're going to come across, they're going to go down, and then they're going to come out. So even if the chlorine gets up to here, which is quite possible, you know, quite, it could rise up and end up in this area here, it shouldn't pass through the carbon dioxide and into the rest of the base. That's the idea, at least, whether or not it works out as I plan here is a different question. Uh, it shouldn't be too bad if it does. There's not too much chlorine here and we might be able to uh, wall it off and kind of quarantine it before it becomes a problem. But we really need to get that bleach done if we're going to get into the new area. And to get that bleach done, we have to dabble with a little bit of chlorine. And so hopefully this little uh, attempt at an airlock here will get that done. It also, of course, has the added benefit of moving some of this carbon dioxide a little further down or giving more space for that carbon dioxide to uh, to sink so it gets out of the base. Because you can see right now it is getting a little, it's kind of creeping up into the base and eventually we'll start having an effect on like our hatchlings here. You know, if they uh, can't breathe, then they're going to die, which is not ideal. But then from here, we're just going to get a ladder and we're going to go down, right down to about there. At which point we can, of course, go ahead and dig out some of the bleach stone, like so. At which point we can get our hand sanitizer going, uh, and then we can actually go out and start exploring in the swamp biome here. We can get some more sedimentary rock for our hatches, and we can look at finding some of that thimble reed if we want to get some canvases up and running as well. 
I don't think we're going to get around to uh, filtering the water today, but that's fine. We can do that in the, in the next episode. And I've kind of been thinking about how I want to do it. Mostly I've been thinking about the symmetry of the base because right now the base is not super symmetrical and ideally I would like the base to be more symmetrical than it is right now. And in order to get the base to be more symmetrical, we kind of have to deal with this water over here. So what I'm thinking is of trying to move this a little over to the left. I did just see a hatch dig into the ground there. I will go ahead and uh, dig that up so we can wrangle that hatch. But I'm thinking about moving this body of water over to the left a little bit and then building... Also, let's wrangle him real quick. And then building a uh, similar looking body of water over on the left-hand side for polluted water. So on the left, we've got clean water with a pump in it. On the right, we've got uh, polluted water with a pump in it. That polluted water can then be pumped around into our toilets. It can be sieved. It can be used for planting thimble reeds. For example, those thimble reeds that we're going to look for uh, do require polluted water. If I scroll down here, uh, it will say somewhere that polluted water is required. You need 160 kilograms per cycle of polluted water to grow a thimble reed. And uh, if we look in the research tab real quick, there is a specific farm tile. This one right here, the hydrophonic farm, which can grow one plant on a seed and can also be used to uh, pump water into that farm tile. So what we can do is we can pump the polluted water into the hydroponic farm tile, grow our own thimble reed, and then use that to make canvases, to make clothing for our duplicates, all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, speaking of which, we do have new skills available as well as a new duplicate that we can choose from i think for now we'll take the directlet eggs um, these are another creature that i have looked into uh, possibly farming because if you shave these guys you get fiber again there are two different kinds there is the uh, standard drecker and then the glossy drecker if you shear the standard drecker you actually get fiber the same thing that we're trying to get from the uh, thimble reed and then further down if you shear the glossy drecker you get oil uh, sorry plastic i think which is an interesting thing for these guys to drop but if you shear these guys uh, you get plastic so at some point we might look into uh trying to wrangle these guys they are a little bit trickier to deal with from what i've read like they require hydrogen and they only eat certain plants and they've got much more stringent requirements than the um the hatchlings over here and so we might hold off a little bit before we start looking into uh to farming those but they are a possibility if the uh, thimble reed plan doesn't uh, doesn't pan out so hopefully we'll get that bleach stone fairly soon here they're all just kind of doing other stuff for the time being uh we do have new skill points as well available to be uh allocated here so stinky is currently on astronomy research and he can't go any further until we get exosuit training and i feel like we might as well push him down this line and get him to uh rocket navigation at some point in the future it actually works out quite well because i've um unintentionally also given Mima these two skills and I think she is the, also the one who's doing the research right earlier in today's episode I uh, made it so that she could do research before anyone else yeah I've put her at like a medium priority for research so she'll do it after stinky but before everybody else and so uh, once she is done with the carrying which she's almost done with now we can actually start pushing Mima down the research tree as well at which point we'll have two people capable of doing you know rocket training and she's actually into that as well so that is all good uh, we can get Mima all the way down to rocket navigation and uh, her and stinky can focus on that side of things uh, finally before i do jump out of there we do also have may who for now we're just going to keep on going with artwork and we're going to give her plus two in creativity and make her a master at uh, decorating and of course now that she's leveled up there is a new hat available which even has its own paintbrush in it i love it all right so a little while later here and they finally managed to get the first little bits of bleach stone i don't think we quite have enough yet to build this we don't but we're almost there i think they just picked up maybe 27 kilograms right there we'll go and get the rest in just a second here it did take them a long time to do this simply due to the fact that there's no oxygen down here and so they had to they get a bit down they would build one ladder then they'd have to go back up to breathe and then repeat the process all over again so it did take a little while but the hand sanitizer is now ready to go and so we are gonna oh we've, it's run out excuse me are we using the uh, the bleach for something? Let me pause real quick. And we will put this down, I think, somewhere. I don't want to put it down on this side here because they're going to get polluted water at some point. I think what I might do is have it somewhere over here. So we'll make this bit a little taller. Like this. We'll dig this out, of course. And then we'll have the hand sanitizer right about here. So before they go back to the airlock, they uh, wash their hands with the hand sanitizer. I don't know what we're doing with the the bleach done here it's going somewhere and uh, and preventing us from using it but for now we'll put that there and much like with the sinks and the wash basins before it we can go ahead and uh, designate the orientation here for now it really only matters that we have them wash their hands where they're coming back out of the slime area 
Uh, but in the future, we could always change that if, uh, if needs be, although I can't really see a reason why we would. Uh, I did put down a new storage bin because, again, we are very much so full on, uh, on storage, which I think is good because it means that most of the area of the base is now clean. Previously, we had you know, just rocks and, and things just all over the base, which wasn't great, like this over here. I will make this a slightly higher priority. Some more oxide there, which is always good. Uh, let me check the germs. Yeah, so I'm going to cancel this real quick just because I want to make sure that we get this down before they get anywhere near the slime lung. I still don't see any thimble reeds yet, which is a little worrying. Hopefully, I've made the right choice in not going this way and then going this way instead. I feel like there definitely should be some thimble reed around here, but we'll see. So for now, you only need to do this when you're leaving. You don't need to do it on the way in. And so what we should be able to do is dig this out. Now, we might have to watch out here because I think right now all of our storage solutions are currently set, I think, to store slime. I don't know where slime is, maybe organic. Yeah, I think it might not show up until we actually pick up some slime because our duplicates don't know what it is just yet. But we want to make sure that we don't bring the slime back in here. We want to make sure that we have uh, storage solutions that are before, or like on this side of the hand sanitizer, so that when our duplicates do mine the slime, on the way back, they will, you know, drop the slime off before they come into the base, and then they'll wash their hands, and no slime lung will ever get into our base itself. Um, but guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's video there. We got some good stuff done. We got our new little hatch farm down here, which I'm very happy with and excited to see where this goes. We are now out of igneous rock, and so we are going to have to change that actually real quick to something like uh, sandstone maybe for the time being. We've got a lot of sandstone uh, in our base, so we'll do that. Uh, next episode, we'll come back. We will try and find some thimble reed. We'll try and get some of the sedimentary rock so we can try and get them to kind of mutate into the rock hatches we'll look at filtering our water uh, i did also notice that our water level over here is getting a little bit low so we might also have to look at pumping this water up and into this body over here or maybe just putting a pump uh, down here for you know the rest of our base we'll deal with that in the next episode but for now as always if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more oxygen not included be sure to go ahead and hit that like button it really does help out a lot leave a comment down below subscribe if you're new here to get notified as soon as new videos come out as always thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.